Hey, this is Big Gene from Raw Deal, The Last Big Night. We're here with Cooking and Conversation on the Gene Deal Show. How everybody doing? I hope you had a lovely weekend. I know everybody's still feeling a certain kind of way because of the loss of Nipsey Hussle. And um, like I said, I didn't know the kid. I didn't know the kid's music. But I felt a certain kind of way, man, being a father, being a, a person who has uh, been around the community and everything like that. So uh, I was reviewing some tapes on this stuff, man. And I want to talk about y'all just a little bit before I go into my show. You know, my show is Slicks to Vol- Slicks to Vesta Stallone, uh, Holly ba- Saving Holly Berry and Serena Williams. I'm glad you guys are here with me today. And I appreciate you st- with your support. I'm again, I'm gonna talk about what happened at the show. And I've already basically started cooking. I just gotta pull a couple of things that I already seasoned in the refrigerator and everything like that. Um my man uh Cash told me the super chat is on. I guess so, Cash. I see a smiling face with uh uh a dollar sign down. It's at the bottom, but you told me it's supposed to be at the top. Oh, I push close, so it's closed. No, I don't want it to close. So I guess it is what it is. How everybody doing? Yo, uh, before everybody get in here, let me stir up some of this stuff. I'm making some, I'm making a couple of things today. I'm making some chicken parmesan, a little easy, quick method to do it, you know, because I li- I love chicken parm because I, I, you know, I can't eat shrimp no more. I used to love shrimp parmesan. Man, that was one of my favorite meals. So now I have to just stick with the chicken parmesan. So I'm going to show you a quick way to make it real, just real nice and easy. You know, no hassle, you know, stuff that you can get from the store. Just jazz it up a little bit, throw a little stuff on it, and boom, put it in the oven, and you're good. It'll be ready in the next 15, 20 minutes. Uh, and um, that's basically it. That's what the show is going to be about. So what I got to do right now, I'm going to start staring up. And uh, we're going to wait for a couple of people to get in the room. Uh, Rosewood, what's good with you? All right. Uh, Let me do this right quick right here. Yeah. All right. Evolve, man. How you doing, Roxanne? Peace, peace. Uh, Ice, what's up? What's up, team? How you doing? All right. So uh, let me stir up this, uh, uh, this sauce, this uh pasta sauce and uh i'm gonna start off with this linguine it's going to be chicken parmesan with linguine and uh, i'm gonna come back and we're gonna talk and i'm gonna i'm gonna tell you a couple of stories and everything like that we're gonna do it that way so just give me one minute i hope everybody's doing all right again mr manny mans mr mini man what's that mr manny mans Respect to you, brother. Leonard Wilson, respect to you also. How y'all doing? I hope everything is fine. Raymond, he slipped out of Waco, Texas. Shout out to Chicago. Yeah, I'm wearing this old school Cleveland. Shout out to people in Cleveland. Marcus Johnson, salute to you, brother. All right. Rosewood, you cooking right now, too? All right. (laughs) Zeke Waters, what's happening? All right. So I'm going to start this... um, Sauce, you know, I made this tomato sauce. I used tomato paste and I got my got my tomato sauce. I got put my oregano in here, my basil, little Italian season, real nice and thick. I got my water boiling right here for my linguine. I took a, 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 a chicken bouillon cube and I put it in my water with some olive oil. I like to do it that way because it make you can, you can eat the noodles without any seasoning on it. When you put that chicken bouillon on those noodles, oh my God, it takes your linguine or your spaghetti to a whole nother level. I just wanted to start off cooking because I wanted to talk to y'all a little bit more. So I said, you know, listen here, let me uh, start something, get some of the stuff started. And 
That's what I did. I seasoned my meat, my chicken, last night. I said my meat, somebody going to take that to another level. It's, it's funny how you can say something on the internet and they'll twist it all around. A nigga said he seasoned his meat. I seasoned my chicken last night. Turn it off right now. And I made some ground chicken too. So I put this linguine in there. Get this stuff on the road right quick. So maybe we can see a finished product. Because I'm tired of cooking and y'all don't see a finished product. I would love to see y'all finished product. I would love for y'all to taste the finished product. But I want to talk to you about a couple of things last week. I forgot to mention the uh okay Reggie Roberts, thanks for that uh super chat, brother. <laughs> I got super chat now, bro. Thank you. Wow, appreciate that, Reg. All right, let me get that back. I seen a couple of my uh bros come in there. Let me get that back. All right. Fratis, Fratis Simon, thanks for the super chat. Appreciate it. All right. Detroit is in the house always. What's up, Detroit, Michigan? My man KK out there. I just spoke to him. I'm trying to get him to do a book. I'm trying to get him to do a, a documentary. You know, he was one of the dudes that was instrumental in the, uh, not the start, but actually giving BMF you know, that load for they can get it on. All right. Let me see if I'm doing it right. If I push the button right there. Oh, that's it. That's it. Mud Jones. Thank you for that super chat. Appreciate you. What up with you? All right. So now um, KK was instrumental in giving uh, BMF that load. They was doing the little ones and twos. But when KK, when they met KK, you know, they was able to do ones, twos, threes, fours. <laughs> One, two, buckle my shoe. They they was ready to move on and get on and do their thing then. So that was a good thing. So, um, you know, shout out to Detroit always, as well as St. Louis. Always always Brooklyn. You understand? I love Brooklyn. You know, when I first came to New York, I used to go out to Brooklyn and play basketball out there in Mother Gaskin in Bronzeville. The people from Harlem, my dudes from Harlem thought I was crazy. But them dudes out there in Brooklyn, they played the kind of ball I was grew up on. Like we used to play out of St. Louis, pick them up, fuck them up. You know what I'm saying? The guys out in Brooklyn did the same thing. They played hard body. You know what I'm saying? So I used to love going out there on Sunday, get a Sunday dinner out there in my man's them uh house out there in Browns. They the pop they they brought they were no brownstone, but it was, they lived in the projects. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Out there in uh on Mother Gaston. So I used to love going out there, getting a Sunday meal from his mother and playing ball with them dudes out there. So you know, shout out to Brooklyn always. You know what I'm saying? Jay Leasy, what's going on with you, boy? Yo, thanks for everything, Jay. I appreciate what you be doing for me, man. All right? Let's go. So um, I want to uh, give a shout-out from the Final Four. I forgot to mention them last week. And that motorcycle crew that I was talking about that I forgot their name, it was the Black Unicorns. I got a funny story about them. The Black Unicorns was on 110th Street. They was an older crew. They were a little older than the Regulators and um, uh, uh, the Big Shots. You know what I'm saying? So the Big Shots was like the youngest motorcycle crew out. And then there was the Regulators. Then there was the Black Unicorns. They was like the older guys, more experienced riders in the whole nine yards. But it was cool. They was out there. So now uh, they had this guy named Jaws who was a part of them. Yo, it was funny. We used to go up in that joint, and um, Jaws used to Jaws used to uh, had those women in there, and they was doing some things, and it was crazy. Zeke Waters, thanks for the super chat, man. Appreciate you that. Appreciate that. 
out there in San Diego. Thank you for that. So Jaws was this cat that was, I mean, they called him Jaws for a reason. They used to collect money in the club. And they would ask, they would tell any woman in the club how much money they had. And they would have over a thousand sometimes, 1,500. And they would ask any woman if she wanted the fellatio and she could walk in the straight line and pick up this money, they would give it to her. It was hers. All she had to do was walk in the straight line after this guy did what he did to her. And I swear for a living God, I don't want to say this, and it's crazy, but they couldn't do it. They call them jaws for a reason. It ain't too many women that could walk after that man did that. After they made him what you call, they would have to walk and get the money. When I was there, I didn't see a woman walk and got it. Walk, walk and get the money. And that was crazy. That was real crazy. Seven Bridges Group. What's good with you? Thank you for the super chat. Hope all y'all is good out there. So I want to say I, this program today, I said Slick, Sylvester Stallone, Holly Berry, and Saving Serena Williams. Um, I want to talk about my brother Slick. God bless him. You know, and Slick, I told you, he was the uncle and the godfather for a lot of these gangsters out here that you read stories about, that you know, you read in books and magazines and the whole nine yards from the Lou Sims, all these cats. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, he was a good brother. And he saved my life a couple of times. You know, and I told stories about how he did that. You know, just by me being with him and just by people knowing that I was acquainted to him, that, you know, even though it was a brother from another mother, you know, we still was brothers, you know, you know, you didn't go, you didn't see him on the block without me on the block. I would go to work and I couldn't wait to get off on the, get on the block, man. You know what I'm saying? Run, make sure I take care of my kids, do what I had to do. You know what I'm saying? Then go out and be with him, man. I used to go to work and sleep at work sometimes, man. I used to be tired like that. That street light was my lamp pole sometimes. Mm -hmm. But, you know, just by him being who he was, he saved me. And I appreciated that. And I never really, you know, ever told him that. And I got this avenue and this platform. And, you know, I'm giving a big shout out to him for doing that for me. You know, I love him for that. All right. Um, the other thing is I want to talk to, and I'm going to talk first about that. And that was Sylvester Stallone, because this has a lot of things to do with what's happening out to LA right now. Now, if you've seen that thing out there with Nipsey Russell, y'all need to take a real good look at that, you know, and they got some real good footage. It ain't all what they saying in my book. Yo. And I've done investing. I took I took search and surveillance with the DEA. I worked for elite investigations. If you look at that footage, it's some other people involved in that. It looked like it was a setup I, to me. I could be wrong. It looked like it was a setup to me. So y'all go back and look at that. And look at the guy in the white shirt and the guy to go talk to the guy before he even do something. You seem like he said something to him. Y'all take take a look at that, man. Look at look at that footage. You know, I know everybody talking about uh, that, what they say, conspiracy theories in the whole nine yards. But it seems like there's more going on than meets the eye. What's up, Detroit, Michigan again? DT, Justin Hawkins, Ron Mayer, Jay Leasy, what's up with you? Savage, Dracon, salute to you. Get somebody else in here. Yep. 
So it reminds me with Pop got killed. No, yeah, 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 when Pop got killed. And they was about to go to war out there in uh, Cali. And a couple of people did, you know, die. Let me stir up this spaghetti right quick. Hold on. I told y'all that I was making some. Mm, yeah. I told y'all I was making some chicken parmesan. I'm doing it with linguine noodles. And I'm gonna go, I'm and I'm gonna make some lemon pepper chicken. I'm not gonna hold y'all too long on this. But when Pac died and all those people start getting killed out there in uh LA, and then Big turned around and the same thing happened to Big. Who that? Is that Nina watching? I hope Shea Boogie is watching. What up with you, Shea Boogie? You watching? I'm watching you too. <laughs> no, but um, it was like Sylvester Stallone when he wanted to do that movie about Pac and Big and them like that. I think he was calling it Rampart. He gave me a call because they sent me over a contract because they needed they needed my part. They thought back then and there I played a, a intricate part to the uh, what the FBI, what the LAPD was saying and everything like that. So I got a call from Sylvester Stallone himself. Now, you know, I know all these cats be out here and, they, you know, they go against and they, they waiting for, you know, things to fall off. They waiting for things not to be what they are right now. It don't matter. I'm giving y'all me, man. You know, you got to understand that the information is what I'm talking about. You know, you ain't going to read it in a book. You ain't going to see it in the movies. You're going to get this. You understand? You're going to get this because you got somebody firsthand that was willing to come out. Like, you know, I know some of these other guys, these white boys who's doing books and stuff like that. They coming out of retirement. They doing books. You got uh, the... FBI, you got uh, uh, Caden, you got a lot of people who coming out of retirement and they want to do books and everything like that. You know, I had an opportunity to do one with Simon and Schuster, but my man shot it down. He did what he did. So until I get somebody that can formulate something and do something real positive, I just had this other guy who spoke to me, Black, you know, Vladimir, not the Black TV guy, because somebody said, yo, Jim, you don't need Black. You know, it wasn't the Black TV guy. It was this dude, Vladimir, you know, he's working on um, Bad Boy 2. He was supposed to be hollering at me. We were setting up about to do some things. I got him some people, you know, sent him movies and everything like that. And then next thing you know, he said, yo, man, I was in my lawyer's office and Puff came up in there. And I was like, oh, yeah? He said, yeah, Puff asked me to, um, where I do my shopping at. And I said, he asked you where you do your shopping at. I said, oh, man. And from that point on, man, me and boy, man, I ain't heard from dude. So there, there we go again. <laughs> and it's crazy, man. But, but that's my life. So I'll just give it to you, you guys, man. I appreciate what y'all do. I appreciate y'all coming here, listening to me in the whole nine yards, giving me your ears and stuff. So it is what it is. So to get back to this um, Sylvester Stallone, he gave me a phone call. He said, yo, Gene, you know, you could play your own part in the movie if you want to. Because he was going to play Russell Poole way before Johnny Depp got this whole thing. This stuff been going on for a long time, man. So uh, he said, you could play your own move. You could play your own part. We just need you to sign off on this is the information you gave to the uh, FBI and the LAPD and everything like that. And so we could use it. I said, I would sign off on it, man, but I can't. And he said, yo, why, Gene? You know what I'm saying? This is going to be big. I said, yo, at this time, it was at the height of the situation. I said, I believe a lot of people going to die, man. He said, break that down to me. And Sylvester Stallone, you know, you wouldn't think that he cared 
but he cared, man. It wasn't about the dollars and cents and what that movie could have made at the time. He felt that, yo, maybe a lot of people are going to die. Maybe we may not do this. Hold on. I'm going to study spaghetti up again. I'm going to show you this sauce and how we're going to do this sauce uh, with this uh, chicken parmesan right quick. So it's 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 it's, 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 it's mad funny that I was talking to him, and all the time I'm talking to him, I'm in, I'm in my mind, I'm like, yo, I just want this motherfucker to say, Adrian, Adrian. <laughs> yo, I, I was waiting for him to say some shit like that, but uh, it never happened. And we talked serious, man, for about a half hour, and everything about this whole East Coast West Coast thing, and. You know, he decided not to do the movie based on the conversation me and him had, man. And that was crazy. I could not believe that. He, Zeke Waters, thank you for the, the super chat. The marathon continues out there in San Diego. Respect, bro. Respect. Zeke Waters, thank you. You know what I'm saying? So it's like that. I was like, yo, this is crazy. This is mad crazy.